So I work in the wine department at a local Binnie's. Um, and I interact with the spirits department there, right? We talk and debate and I, you know, argue with them. It's fun. Um, and then, like, yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon, they were basically cleaning out their sample stash. Like, this is stuff that the, the brand reps had left behind in a box for them to try out because they wanted them to be excited about their products. Um, so the, the Spirits team had, of course, picked through all of what they already wanted, right? But they came to me, and they were like, hey, you want any of the stuff that's left? And, um, and so I looked through, and in this box of mostly, like, questionable gins and vodkas and stuff, I found these. These little gems. Uh... Old Hammer. Old Hammer um, is a project from the West Fork Whiskey Company. They're now distilling their own stuff, but uh, they started off selling this. Let me put these in, in order. Um, and uh, so basically, this, the story behind this is it's, it's MGP sourced, like, you know, 75% of the stuff on the American whiskey shelf these days. But it is not the traditional uh, MGP recipes. Uh, you will not see the the smoke wagon. Smoke wagon. It's the best. It's super smooth. Smoke wagon. You will not see the sm smoke wagon mash bill here. You will not even see the 21% rye mash bill here. That is my personal. No, I should switch those. I guess. Uh, my my personal foe in all. I really. I don't know if I've ever had a had a bourbon at the twenty one percent rye mash bill that I've really liked. Can I say that? Can I be honest? Uh, no, they are not picking those obvious choices. They are not going with the ninety five percent rye. They are going with uh, well, let's let's uh, set these up. Their so their bourbon mash bill is ninety nine percent corn, one percent malted barley. Ninety nine percent corn. 1% malted barley. So the flavor grain, we people, bourbon people always debate about flavor grains, right? In this case, the flavor grain is corn. Like there's there's just corn. Like barley is there to get fermentation started and that's that's it. Um, uh, but so, so this is something which I, I looked at it when it came out maybe like two years ago and I thought there, there's no way. There's no way it can actually be good, right? Right, but the price was 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 good, especially on the. So we'll get to the cast strength offerings. Both of these cast strength ones, the the bourbon and the rye, are forty bucks, forty bucks. Uh, and I love, I love that American whiskey can still offer you know, barrel proof cast strengthy kinds of offerings at that price point. Um, not a whole lot else there though. Like you've got. Uh, the, the main competition is uh, Maker's Mark cast strength. And I will be honest, uh, I was not that excited about Maker's Mark cast strength. I found it very, not one note, but like two, three notes. Like it's got two, three notes, it's doing well, and that's it. Um, so when I, I, I've been staring at these for like two years thinking there's no way they can even be that good. There's no way. There's no way, right? Like there, there's no way. But what, what if they're good, right? <laughs> so what, what if they're good? So and here I have a golden opportunity to find out, and I will tell you if they are good. Um, so yeah, the uh, let's let's start with the uh, old hammer standard bourbon. This is bottled at eighty percent alcohol by volume, which just feels un-American. But you know what? Let's. Let's dive in and see what a 99% corn, 80% uh, uh, bourbon is going to taste like. Incidentally, these are all, they're, they're labeled as straight bourbons, uh, straight bourbon, bourbon whiskeys, but they are uh, three years old, or at least marked as three years old minimum on their website. Here we go. You know, that's, 
Th that nose is better than I was I was than I was expecting actually. Okay, so I am getting a lot of good MGP herbaceousness. I am getting um, uh, some some basil, some like uh, some thyme in there. Um, well, it smells a little like some like some some tumbleweed, some just dried kind of vegetation. A little bit of, of corn coming through, a little bit of like, but it's toasted corn. It's like elote uh, that you would buy on the street. And then you're going to cover that your elote in a little bit of like just a dash of vanilla essence and maybe like a, uh, a thin layer of kind of um, cherry, you know, like cherry syrup, like I hop cherry pancake syrup, that kind of thing. That's okay. I mean, for 40%, that's an okay nose. I did pour these in the right... I did pour these in the right glasses, right? That's that's all right. That's all right. Let's see what we got on the palette. Again, it's... That is perfectly acceptable, actually. That's, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but for like a bourbon at 40% alcohol, there's there's a lot there's a lot going on there. I might, I actually do like this a lot more than the 20% rye offerings that I've had. Um, maybe there is something to this 99% corn mash bill. Right, so unexpectedly, again, this is very herbaceous. We are bringing the tumbleweeds, the dried grass, the um, the basil, the thyme, a little bit of rosemary in there, um, even a hint of dill. Um, no, not not any rye in this, but there's some dill showing up. I'm all right with this. This is okay. Some some pours me a glass of this over ice at a party. I'm I'm there with this. Um, I mean, it's a very simple profile. There's some some uh, frosted mini wheats kind of things going on. It's not uh, uh, intermingling with the uh, the herbal notes. Again and again, we're getting vanilla and um, really a lot of cherry on the palate. Like a little like one dried cherry in there. Um, It's a little thin on the mouthfeel. The finish is short and clipped. It is not sort of going past my teeth. But you know what? I respect this. This is okay. Um, I don't remember even remember. I didn't even check the price point on the eighty percent. But I mean, if this is like twenty bucks or under, I'd say this is this is perfectly, you know, good little value. Here. I'm gonna give it. I was not gonna go through this a second time, but. Now that it's kind of showing up to play for me, I'm going to see what happens when I add water. Not bad. And it's funny, like, even in with an almost entirely corn mash bill, like, it's funny how much of the, of the MGP uh, herbaceousness kind of comes through. That's fun. I like that. Um, all right, moving on now to the cask strength hammer straight bourbon whiskey three years old this is about 57.5 percent alcohol you will notice that the sample bottles i got do not have abvs on them uh this one says 80 proof but um none of the others say anything so i'm going to assume 57.5 same mash bill much more pepper in the nose a lot of kind of um, black pepper, freshly ground pep black pepper coming through. Also, it means similar, it's a little bit more closed off than the 80%, which makes sense. Um, 
but what I'm smelling is very much in line with it. I'm getting a lot of herbaceous kinds of notes. I'm getting yeah, basil, a little bit of dill, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of thyme, parsley. And then, you know, some the, the frosted mini wheats, those slight bready grainy notes, elote again. Little little bit of kind of mixed cherries. It's more um, of a cherry eau de vie note. It's more of a Kirschwasser note on this one. Some vanilla, a little bit of creme brulee. I mean, these are young. These are not, there's no getting around that. But I mean, it works. This is it's it's not a bad nose. Like this is not it's not my favorite nose in the world, but it is serviceable. All right, let's see what happens on, on the palate. Kind of the same story, but the wood is actually so. I mean, obviously, it's more nippy because of the alcohol, but also that it feels like there's a little bit more wood on this one. Um, so I'm getting, yeah, those the same herbaceous notes. Run it, run the list through again. Basil, thyme, parsley, all that. Um, but now I'm getting like a like a over stewed sweet tea kind of note. So you meant to, you know, leave your your batch of tea on the porch for like a day, and you left it for like three days because you just forgot and it got a little little too over stewed a little too boiled down but you decided to drink it anyways um so yeah we're getting over stewed sweet tea um a little bit more of a dried cherry note this time on the palate than, than a kirsch note A lot of black pepper and a lot of vanilla and a lot of creme brulee. Don't forget that this is a bourbon. Um, and again, the finish is very clipped. It's not going very far back in my mouth, but it's actually quite grippy. And I think that's that's due to the, due to the strength. Um, so yeah, definitely showing its youth. But I mean, I'm enjoying the character of this. I'm enjoying the 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 sort of MGP kind of herbaceous -y quality of this. Um, so I am darn excited to try the the rye, given how solid the, the previous two are. All right, Old Hammer Rye Cask Strength, also presumably 57%, although the whoever the rep does, is did not write the, uh, the strength on there. They wrote the uh, the Binnie's item number on there, like the G, what we call the GSC, but not the strength, weirdly enough. So this uh, um, is is a, is a rye. It is a MGP rye, but it is not the f all you know famous ninety five percent rye mash bill rye. This is a fifty one percent rye mash bill MGP rye. Uh, the rest is corn, and you've got uh, four percent malted barley in there as well. Again, three years old ish. Honestly, this nose. Hold on. Yeah, this nose actually smells more like candied and and desserty than the than the bourbons did. Honestly, what this reminds me of is. Um, a slightly kind of more peppery version of the like uh, higher rye uh, um, MGP bourbon mash bill. Yeah, that's, that's that's basically what I'm getting. This is the smoke wagony back mash bill, smoke wagon, um, but a little bit more, a little bit more peppery, a little bit more kind of grungy and earthy. It's nice. Uh, so we're getting, yeah, so start with a nice old handful of like fresh topsoil. Throw that in there. Um, I was going to say herbaceous, but it really does, it, it's green, but it's not herbal green. It's more like just kind of 
wild grass and wild kind of plants kind of mixed in together. A little mint in there though. Um, certainly some graininess. I am getting uh, some Baltic style black bread, black sourdough bread. The, um, the frosted mini wheats note is there again. But yeah, those there's a there's a desserty quality to this, which is which was a little bit there in the previous two, but really pushing its head uh, head up with this. So yeah, lots of creme brulee kinds of stuff on the nose. Lots of um, not lots of, but moderate hints of vanilla. Lots of um, So if you if you like took a if you made a dessert out of like wild grass and plants that were sort of growing in your your backyard, and you mix that together with lots of creaminess and sugar and vanilla, and a little hint of like and you threw in a little hint of Kirschwasser in there just for fun. That's kind of what this smells like. It's nice. Um, I was expecting this to be my favorite, uh, and it probably will be. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Wait, did I add water to this? I don't think I did. Step back. I'm gonna add water to my to my previous tasting. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Back to the rye. I was not really expecting much from this, but man, this is. This is kind of my jam. I'm into this. Um, uh, so we're getting like just the same kind of story as, as on the nose. It feels a lot like the high rye smoke wagon tumbling dice sort of mash bill, but a little bit more, a little bit more earthy and grungy and, and serious. Um, uh, I mean, most of what I said on the nose, I can just repeat. Yeah, crazy chef has an idea. He's gonna make creme brulee, but he's gonna sort of interlace the creme brulee-ness with like tons of wild herbs and grass that he fi just finds out, you know, in, in his local park. And then he's gonna put like a couple of cherries on top um, and then just grind some fresh black pepper all over it. That's, that's basically the profile here. It's very grassy and kind of wild greenness. A little bit of like a of a of a asparagus thing going on there too, but that's married to this very um, this very kind of desserty profile too. The 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 creme brulee, the vanilla, the, those little hints of dessert cherries. I'm actually delighted by this. This is not, I was expecting this to be okay. I was not expecting this to be sort of genuinely bordering on something I actually want to buy a bottle of. All right, let's add a couple of squirts of water. Let's see if that's good enough. Yep, okay. I'm running out of water a little bit. That's a, that's a concern. Okay, well, let's go back through. Back to the ham, uh, hammer, hammer or hammer, hammer uh, bourbon, forty percent. Uh oh. So with water, the nose, which I was enjoying, remember, uh, kind of recedes a little bit. 
it doesn't develop. It just kind of like, and it kind of pulls back, collapses a little bit with water. And again, it was like, it wasn't like a bunch of squirts. It was like three drops. On the palate, here we go. Oh, it did not like that. It did not like the water at all. Again, three drops. Mm -mm. No development. It just kind of get gets kind of thin and a little bit slightly bitter and kind of awkward. Um, this again. This is still way better than I was expecting from the from the stats. This is way better than I was expecting. Yeah, but the finish kind of disappears. Doesn't now feel isn't great. But it's all right. It's all right. I you know I, again, I would drink this. You know, serve serve this at a wedding or something. I would absolutely drink this. And I will give it a perfectly honest score of 77. 77 out of 100. And I believe the Maker's Mark cast strength was right around that same territory. So would I take this over Maker's Mark cast strength? Or, yeah, it's, it's kind of a dead heat for me. It's um, That is more, you know, obviously desserty and just hedonistic and oak driven. This has more, for me, this has more going on. The, um, the herbaceousness really sells it for me, but it also collapses, you know, because of the proof the first time, you know, if I give it a, an angry look. Right. 77 points for the old hammer bourbon 40%. Uh, moving on to the bourbon at 57, the, the cast strength bourbon at 57.5 or something like that. Interesting. Sort of develops a timber note. I would... The amount of kind of green stuff and, and like that is coming out of these when the mash bill is, again, 99% corn is quite um, astonishing and impressive. Yeah, this just smells like someone is eating a cake at, you know, a t in a timber yard. That's, you know, it smells like, you know, freshly cut wood and delicious desserty stuff. And elote. Someone is eating, uh, you know, some fresh toast, you know, toasted corn alongside the, uh, <laughs> alongside the cake and the milling operation. Not really a lot of development. It's it's it, so the the woody notes have come forward a little bit. The um, the, the sweet desserty notes have come forward a little bit, but it's it's not really a better nose. All right, let's see what we got on the palate. Huh. You know what I think. I think the water like made this worse. Don't say I drowned it because I can I can tell I didn't. It just yeah, adding adding a, a couple of squirts of water to this just to get just to prove it down, put a little pressure on it has really pulled back on those green notes I was enjoying so much, and replaced it with a lot more kind of desserty oaky notes. And um, the peppery notes have kind of come through a little bit too. It's all right. Finish is still pretty, you know, it holds. It, it, it holds a decent length, but it does not proceed very far back in my mouth. It kind of stops well before my molars uh it's all right it's it's like a i'm gonna give this an 80 minus um which is a, a better score than i was expecting to give this but it's still you know would i buy a bottle of this for 40 bucks uh, probably not 
I would probably still step either step down to, you know, old granddad 114, or I would step up to one of the myriad other cast strength bourbons at 50 bucks, like um, New Riff, uh, I don't know, Ezra Brooks, there, but if, uh, Rare Breed, if I can get it. It's okay, though. Um, this, I respect this. I respect what what they have managed to do at a you know very difficult price point. Eighty minus, eighty minus, for the Hamer Cast Strength Bourbon. But let's move on to the um, the Hamer Hammer uh, Cast Strength Rye now with some water. Ooh, there is a wintergreen kind of a um, spearmint note coming through on the nose now. It's really kind of taken over. And I'm okay and I am totally okay with that. I'm I'm enjoying the I'm enjoying the herbaceous of all of these, but um this rye is really kind of kind of showing me some moves. Yes, spearmint, desserty stuff, and kind of more herbaceous stuff going on there too, and the the, the grungy, earthy like just dirt kind of kind of thing going on. Nice nose, good nose on the palate. That's very solid. That's very good. Um, not very good, but it, it's good. It's good. Um, not tons and tons and tons of development on the palate by any means, but <clears throat> it's peppery. It's kind of minty, wintergreeny. It's grassy. It's herbaceous. It's it's grungy, but it's also got. Those sort of desserty elements, the vanillas, the the kind of you know toasted cream, uh, almost um, uh, baked ice cream kind of character. Yeah, this is this is nice. Let me go. I'm gonna uh, so score wise. I have this way ahead of the bourbon, and I just want to check that I'm not, you know, messing myself up. I'm going to try the bourbon one more time. The bourbon is perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay, but the rye is just, it's a couple of steps ahead. All right, so I'm stuck between an 83 and an 84, so I'm going to give this an 83 plus. Um, I mean, for 40 bucks, this is this is a nice little deal. This is a nice little deal. And it does make me wonder if people sh are sleeping on this particular 51% rye mash bill. Um, I mean, I know people, everyone is is going for the, uh, the 95 percenters, right? Right? Um which I, I love too. I love those. I love those whiskeys. But um, you know, here you have something that is kind of cutting the, the distance in between uh, the smoke wagons and you know the, the James E. Peppers. Um, it's right in between those, and it works. Like this is this is a nice little whiskey, and it's not that expensive. Um, Yeah, I like this. I may have to buy a bottle of this. Um, 83 plus, 40 bucks. Uh, Hamer Cast Strength, ham, Hamer Hammer Cast Strength Rye Whiskey. Um, and that's what I got. Thanks for watching. This, these are, uh, seven, what did I write? 77 points for the ha standard Hammer Bourbon. Nice, but do not 
do not add a water to this. There's lots of character here, and you will be you might be tempted to give it some time or some water. Don't just pour it, drink it right away. Um, 77 points. Old Hammer Cast Strength Bourbon. 80 minus. It's okay. It's all right. Better than, better than I was expecting, but not great. And the Old Hammer Cast Strength Rye, which is actually quite solid. And I... Uh, I will be looking for other potentially older examples of this same mash bill. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching and cheers.